Hi, it's Dwyer. DwyerVIP.com, GamblersAdvisory.com. <clears throat> Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. There are going to be ups and downs. Gambling carries significant risk. You need to be aware of that, right? We had a great weekend this weekend. Just to understand there'll be some weekends that aren't great. I hope for those of you following my videos, you were able to cash in on the greater than three to one underdog, Robert Stiglitz, winning the rematch of his fight against Arthur Abraham, who beat him the first time around, right? Even with the, uh, ba -da 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 -da. even with the hedge, you should have gotten greater than plus 100 on the play, right? Hopefully you cashed in. Also, David Lopez, Don George. The over hit. In fact, the fight went the distance. I understand there's some controversy with the scoring. I personally thought Teddy Atlas overdid it on the telecast. I thought that fight was a close fight. Doesn't matter, because as long as you had the over, you were able to cash in on that fight, right? Let's talk about two other fights. Adlanir Solis versus Leif Larson. Our focus in this video is the heavyweight division, right? Solis was a 5-1 to one favorite. Hopefully you cashed in. Solis won the fight. Also, Hellenius versus Sprott. The fight went over, as we talked about in the pre-fight video. This one went several rounds. Hopefully you cashed in there too. Let's talk about the heavyweights. Let's talk about these two fights. Solis versus Leif Larson and Hellenius versus Michael Sprott. Right? Let's do our forensics because I believe these two fights serve as an excellent guidepost on certain styles and certain problems. Now, for those of you who want to see the fights, I have the fights up on my channel page. Just go to Favorites 1. You'll actually see the entire Solis Larson fight and the entire Hellenius Sprott fight. But let me let you in on a secret. Right? When a fight falls into a pattern, you don't have to watch every round of the fight. You can actually focus on what the fighters are trying to accomplish, key moments in the fight, and the spacing, how the fighters set up, whether or not a fighter is able to be outside or inside, and things of that nature. Now let's focus on the spacing in both of these fights, right? Where the fighters are standing relative to each other. And let's also focus on the shorter men in this fight. Right? Solis and Sprott. Both of these fights feature a tall man fighting a shorter guy. Let's focus on the shorter guys because, in my opinion, they're different talent levels. If you're going to be a counterpuncher, let's just use common sense. We don't have to be trainers. We can just use common sense. If you're going to be a counterpuncher, if I want to have the threat of counterpunching you, then I have to be close enough to counterpunch you, right? If I'm too far away to hit you with a punch, especially if you're the taller man with the longer reach, then there's no threat of me counterpunching you. Then the idea of me counterpunching you goes out the window. <clears throat> now, YouTube Nation, my own subscribers, uh, and responding to the pre-fight video, criticized Solis for being out of shape, right? Solis doesn't look like an athlete. Okay, fair enough. But understand, of these four fighters, he's clearly the best. What you'll notice in the Leif Larson fight, and let me point out, Leif Larson, who went into this fight unbeaten, is underrated. 
right? He's actually a decent heavyweight. He was just in against a better man this last weekend, right? Understand that Solis is able to cut down the ring. He has a guard that allows him to come forward and to be in position to throw counters. It's very hard to keep Solis away from you. He's coming forward. And the way he fights, he's not relying on upper body elusiveness. He's not young Mike Tyson. What he's doing is leaning forward. He has a guard up. When you throw, he blocks the punch. And he comes back with a clever counter. Right? Very clever counter. How clever? Larson throws a right hand. Right? The right hand's coming in over here. Right? Let's say I'm Solis and I'm facing Larson. Larson throws a right hand. Solis will block the right with his left. Then he comes back. Because keep in mind, since Larson is throwing the punch, Larson is close enough to land the punch. Solis blocks the punch. And then doesn't counter Larson to Larson's right side. Instead, Solis, who can counter you from anywhere, throws a loop with his right hand, his dominant hand, throws a looping punch that hits Larson on the side of the head. Right? Solis is devastating with the counters. He can counter you to death. And of course, while he's countering you, He's moving forward. He's getting up close on you. So he can throw very hard punches with built-in leverage wherever he wants. Up top, on your body, right? He gets underneath a big man. It's important because, of course, some of the prevailing heavyweight champs right now are big men. We're in an era of taller heavyweight fighter by historical standards. Understand the guys around today are much bigger than let's say Sonny Liston was. You know, years ago. You know, they're bigger than Jack Dempsey. They're bigger than regular heavyweights. Right? So Solis's ability to move forward to get inside a guy's jab, to literally be countering him. In other words, he's catching the guy's shots on his hands. He's not using his feet for defense. He's using his hands for defense. His ability to protect himself against heavy punchers, right? Larson had an 80% knockout ratio coming into this fight. Solis's willingness to literally block Larson's concussive right hand and then to immediately counter it and to move forward and get inside makes him a major threat to every tall heavyweight in the heavyweight division. Right? The kind of fighter who would give Adlanir Solis, a hard time, is the kind of fighter who is not there for Solis to counter. In other words, you have to have foot speed and lateral movement. I believe an ambush fighter like David Hay, who Solis beat in the amateurs, but who got an amateur knockdown of Solis in a bout that I have on my channel page. Right? A guy like David Hay would give Solis problems because Solis is a counter-punching chess player. Right? Solis is a half-court game. He's not a full-court game. Right? Guys who move around the ring, who aren't boxing you, they're outside, you can't hit them with anything, then they come in on an ambush, then they get back outside. 
right? A guy like that would give Solis problems. But understand, Vladimir Klitschko was not like that. Neither is Vitaly Klitschko. Now let's contrast that with Michael Sprott. I have to say I was disappointed with Sprott's performance. You're fighting Robert Hellenius, a guy with no inside game. Robert Hellenius has the height on you, has the reach on you. That shouldn't be news, right? You should know that before you even get to the arena. What are you doing standing outside getting hit with a steady diet of jabs? It was ridiculous, right? Sprott, in my opinion, fought the wrong fight. He's standing around. He's getting hit with jabs. Hellenius is winning round after round. Sprott's not even forcing the issue to attack Hellenius's weakness, which is Hellenius's inside game. It would be like fighting Vladimir Klitschko and standing outside while he's hitting you for days with that jab. Right? I've seen Sprott fight better fights. Let me say this too. Sprott doesn't have Solis's defense. Right? Sprott uses his legs at time for defense. Well, the problem with that is if you're going to throw a jab on me and I'm going to take a step back to try to avoid the jab, I'm not close enough to you to counter you. Right? You could literally empty the gun if you're a big guy with the reach. You can start emptying the gun knowing that I'm not close enough to you to hit you with any power shots. Right? You can't do that against Adlanir Solis. You can against Michael Sprott. Right? Sprott seemed to be waiting for Hellenius to get tired of jabbing him before he would jump in with anything. And Sprott stands too straight. I know the announcers were saying Hellenia stands too straight. That's true. But so does Sprott. Sprott stands straight. So while he's getting jabbed, he's not doing any slick move to like bounce under the jab and get inside and do damage. Right? There's no Joe Fraser with him. There's no Mike Tyson. In terms of being able to just like roll with the punch and suddenly duck under it and get inside. Sprott has no upper body elusiveness. He was too stiff in this fight. Right? He wasn't trying to knock down the jab even to get inside. So what you had was a shorter guy being kept outside, losing the rounds. Hellenius didn't have to worry about any counters. When Sprott tried to get inside, Hellenius just grabbed him like he grabbed Sam Peter, pulled him close, and held on to him. Hellenius' jab dictated the fight. That was a little bit disappointing. right? Let me point out, too, that Hellenius did move better than I thought he would. Hellenius clearly has worked on his foot speed. He's moved a lot better. But if Hellenius were to fight Adlanir Solis, I'd be rolling with Solis in that fight. Because Solis would be coming forward. He'd be blocking Hellenius' punches. Right? Hellenius can't throw a good uppercut and can't really throw a great punch other than that right hand early in fights, right? Apart from his left jab. And so I believe that armed with this information, Alanir Solis would literally walk down Robert Hellenius if Solis were to get inside. Now you see how Solis has his hands up and leans forward. He'd be very hard to grab because He'd be throwing counters while you're trying to grab him. And then how do you pull him close to you when he's leaning at the waist? Right? If you're fighting a guy standing upright like Michael Sprott, you can pull him close to you. But if you're fighting a guy who's bent at the waist, who's an excellent counterpuncher, who's waiting for just any opening 
to hit you with a counter and you don't know where that counter is going to be, it's very hard to tie him up. So let me sum up. I know Solis doesn't look like he's going to win the decathlon anytime soon. Fair enough. But skill-wise, out of these four fighters, and keep in mind, Robert Hellenius is still unbeaten officially, even though I believe all of us here know he lost to Derek Chisora. But skill-wise, Solis is much better than Robert Hellenius, right? Skill-wise, Solis is much better than Michael Sprott. He showed he was better than Leif Larson. Larson's interesting. Because Larson has power and can take a pretty good punch. He did get hit with some major shots here in the fight, right? But Larson throws punches that are a little bit too wide for someone like Adlinair Solis, right? You'll notice looking at the films that Larson is throwing wide punches. He's not confident enough to throw his own uppercut. Even though Solis is leaning forward, Right, literally leaning forward with rabbit ears wide open underneath. Right, Solis doesn't come in like a Vander Holyfield. He doesn't have a guard to the uppercut. He comes in like this. So it's interesting that Leif Larson couldn't really throw a great uppercut in the early going. One of the reasons why was simply because every time Larson seemed to dig in on punches, he got hit with excellent counters. So let me say this. The jury's still out on how Leif Larson would do against an elite fighter with no inside game, right? You have some. Robert Hellenius, Vladimir Klitschko, an elite fighter with no inside game. The jury's out on how Larson would do, right? Especially if, you know, the other fighter doesn't have a superb jab to keep Larson off of him. I don't think Larson's a bum. I just think Larson was in with one of the world's best heavyweights. I'm still riding the Islander Solis train, right? I'm still on the bandwagon. I thought his performance was technically a very good performance. I thought it was clear he won the fight. Look at two of the judges' scorecards. He won the fight, quite frankly, by several rounds. Finally, let me just add one more thing. You know, is it me? Or has boxing gotten so ridiculous that now we're supposed to believe that the fighters themselves don't even know how many rounds their fights are supposed to be? What's the deal? With Adlanir Solis's corner at the end of the eighth round, thinking that it was only an eighth round fight, right? And this comes on the heels of, of course, the mess in Australia involving Sonny Bill Williams and um, Francois Botha, where the fans thought they were watching a 12 round fight. And then curiously, that fight ended at the end of the 10th round. I mean, only in boxing does nonsense like this happen. Could you imagine? go into a baseball game and then suddenly they run off the field after seven innings or worse yet one team runs off the field after seven innings and doesn't even know it's a nine inning game right or let's say uh, a basketball game where after three quarters suddenly one team runs off the field thinking the game's over well unfortunately in boxing this not only happens from time to time it's happened two times this year Ridiculous. I don't know how you can have rank contenders and their corners not know how many rounds to fight are. Guys, why not hop online and go to boxrec.com and find out how many rounds the fight is before you actually show up to the arena. The fans know how many rounds the fight is. Or at least the fans know how many rounds the fight was advertised to be. Why is it so hard? To just follow through on the advertised length of fights, right? Boxing needs to get its act together. Of course, our fathers said the same thing and our mothers too. And their parents and their parents. This is just part of the sport. This is what makes the sport so entertaining. 
Uh, for those who don't know, at the end of the eighth round, Islandier Salisa's corner thought that was it. Of course, Leif Larson's corner knew there were two more rounds left in the fight. It's inconsequential because nothing big happened, right? Islandier Salisa still won the fight. But uh, it is shocking that you could have a fight of this high profile and have one corner unsure about the length of the fight. Simply ridiculous. To sum up, I think Adelaide Solis is an elite heavyweight. I think his style would uh, give Hellenius all kinds of problems. I think he would give Vladimir Klitschko a very hard time. I think a mobile heavyweight who's not there to be countered, who would make foot speed an issue, someone like a David Hay would give Solis a lot of problems. Let me also point out too, and it's worth looking at, if you look at the amateur fight between David Hay and Solis, <laughs> you're going to see that David Hay didn't try to run in that fight. It's an odd fight because the guys come out to the middle of the ring and literally start duking it out. Now granted, there are reasons for that. Amateur fights are three round fights. In the pros, a guy can move a little bit more, give away some rounds, knowing that he has 10 or 12 rounds, right? Hopefully he knows that before the fight. But um, the bottom line is, if Hay were to fight Solis again, I'm guessing the strategy would be very different than their amateur fight, right? But if you're a stationary big guy with no inside game, you're a sitting duck for Adelaide Solis. As for Michael Sprott, I'll just say, um, you need to ask yourself why you weren't able to slip Robert Hellenius' jab. I don't think you have to be a member of Mensa to figure out how to do that, especially when you're shorter than Hellenius and should have been able to duck under it. Anyway, let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.